On the scale of negative five to positive five, what level of diet and fitness are you currently at and where should you be at on this scale, David? Yeah, we gotta talk about it because this is trending right now. Everything from people at the negative five, let's just say Nikki Avocado, to a zero, which is your average American, all the way to ultra positive five, which are people who are, you know, like counting out their macros and micronutrients every single hour of their day, timing their glucose and insulin levels. You know, this whole spectrum, Andrew, is trending on the internet right now. There is a ton of views across the spectrum. So we got to break it down. We got to let you know where you're at, where you want to be, and what that might entail. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. So in this video, you have this scale that's negative five to positive five, and you're going to be breaking down every level and what it means so that people can plot themselves. So at least this is kind of like a video that's going to help your self-awareness. Guys, we are we are not nutritionists. We're not dietary experts. We're, I'm not a personal trainer, although we, we have some experience with these people or at least watching these videos. We've gotten personal training before. Right, but we're, but we're not experts in it. So I guess it's just for you to kind of understand where you fall. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you got to decide and go to eat a bunch of cod livers or beef livers because that's the healthiest piece of meat that's most micronutrient packed, you know. Most people are not going to be a positive five on a negative five to positive five scale. At least you're going to know where you're at, Andrew. Let's just start real quick. Let's break it down at the negative five. And I, I like giving it the negative because you know how some people like to rank things from a zero to 10. Mm. I like to put the negative charge in there just to let people know we're, we're, we're going against the average. Oh, okay. Okay. To, to make it hit a little harder. Yes, it's yes, yes. Negative. All I right. guess I would say probably people in the negative five to negative three zone, you might be in danger of some, you know, your doctor's not going to like it. Yeah, well, I think you're probably developing some lifelong, you know, uh, diseases or disorders, possibly developing diabetes. You know, that's that's when you're in that sphere when you're really not trying to think about what you eat at all and probably what is readily available around you or that what you can afford oftentimes, let's be honest, is like just not good food. Right, right, right. Then we are in the negative two to negative one zone where people are like not trying to... I guess, look too crazy to the public eye. However, they're not really, they have no knowledge of what's actually going to be good for them, no, right? No, you mean they have no active, like they're not putting any active effort into watching what they eat or their fitness. Right, right. And then we're at negative one to zero, Andrew. This is actually a level that I have spent some time at where it's almost like you're just a low key fat ass. Okay. So what, you're indulging a little too much. You kind of think about your fitness and you're like, yeah, I don't want to be fat, but then- and I'm not only fat, but I don't want to be overweight. And I don't want to, you know, have all these. Th I want to sort of be in good health, but you're not trying very hard. Right, right, right. It's almost like you're more going off just the, the shadow silhouette. Yeah. Or, so, or whatever, you just look at yourself in the shower or mirror or something like that, and you're it, like, oh, okay, I'm okay. Like, is this is this the type where you're like, yeah, I kind of want to be fit. I like that idea. And then someone's like, hey, we got cake. And then you're eating like three pieces. Yes, yes, yes. Because at the end of the day, you value the good feelings and the dopamine release you get from the junk food more than anything else. But obviously, if somebody asks you, yo, do you think junk food's good for you? You're like, no, no, no. You no, know what no, it no. is? You're not turning down anything delicious at this point. Mm, yep. You're, it's almost like you're at the whim of what is offered to you ah. so anyway now we are at the zero point right okay and zero to positive one charge basically where it's like we're caring about not eating ultra junk foods you actively say to yourself i don't want to be a fat ass maybe you're having some diet sodas or some low calorie sodas like that one brand that's popping right now ollie ollie po which right. is what like 30 to 50 calories yeah, yeah, yeah. per there's can there's some low calorie not zero calorie but low calorie sodas. you know what an, an impossible or beyond burger tastes like Okay, so you tried it. So you like, tried it because you're like, you like the idea of it. You're like, okay, maybe I, I need one once in a while. You've probably had an In-N-Out burger protein style. Okay. So, so you do care about getting your veggies in while you're also eating other delicious, fatty, like bad things. Yes, yes, yes. You might make like uh, the good, it's like almost like if you went to fried chicken spot, you're getting the healthier size. Oh. But uh, that's sort of like, in a way, the, the reason you're only a positive one because that's very nominal in comparison to what you're you doing. You get fried chicken and heavy salad dressing in your salad. Mm, but you get the side salad. And maybe you get the roasted chicken. So oh. you get the roasted chicken, you get the side salad. Okay. Uh, moving on to number two, Andrew, you like a little bit more organic things, less factory refined foods. I would say this is your average person who says, you know, I try to be healthy, but has not done any research, Andrew, beyond what they were taught in high school okay, fitness is this, class. Is this the type of person that when they see the calories on the menu, they still try to calculate 
the calories to some extent, but other than that, they don't really think too much about it. Yeah, I would say that somebody at a level two out of 10, they, they know what a Panera bread is like. You know how Panera bread, they, they like feel healthy when you're uh, on the inside, but then you actually look at the macro and the micronutrients, you're like, I don't okay, know. Okay, they kind of go for the turkey or chicken sandwich more often. The turkey. This, this is their compromise. They're like, hey, I want a sandwich, but I'll go for turkey and chicken. Possibly getting the grilled chicken option at McDonald's. Oh, okay. Um, Andrew, these people are starting to understand even what a macro is. Okay. Right? Obviously, macronutrients is what people are really, really tracking, right? But obviously, once we get to the higher level, and, they and track micronutrients too. They're probably somewhat active. Yes. Um, they probably know what a modern salad office spot like Sweet Greens is. Okay. Um, they like the office lunch bowl spots. They might take a daily multivitamin. Okay. Right? They're not taking a bunch of supplements, but they take the multivitamin. So they're trying. They're trying. They may even understand, Andrew, the carbohydrate difference between an apple and a berry. Right? Like oh. your tart fruits versus your sweet fruits. Okay. They may stay away from french fries, mixed sugary cocktails. But, you know, this is when you're starting getting uh, tequila soda, vodka soda territory. Uh, you go for vodka soda or tequila soda instead of all the sugary cocktails. Okay. I think that people start guessing calories or adding in their mind, but they're definitely not tracking. Mm, okay. Right? Because tracking is starting to get, you know, real technical. Tracking is like what? You're calculating, you're writing down, yeah. you're recording. Yeah. Uh, I would say at positive two... Andrew, you have a scale, but it's a regular scale. Mm. Because you know how nowadays there's like smart scales and stuff like that. Right, right, right. All right, moving on to positive three, Andrew. I would say that you're kind of like that fitness dude at work, but you don't make money from it. Okay, but you're a fitness guy. Like you're known as a fit friend. Yeah, a fitness enthusiast or hobbyist. Mm. Um, Andrew, interestingly enough, if you go to a lower end gym, some of the personal trainers actually still fit into this. Okay. But, but not at the high-end gyms. Like, probably not an Equinox trainer or whatever, like a, like a Barry's Boot Camp trainer. Right. But maybe, you know, 24-hour in the suburbs. Who knows? Um, you probably track your calories at least loosely, and you try to eat things that are organic. Okay. Um, you may put your calories in an app, Andrew, at this point, where you're starting to weigh your food out. Mm. Um, you may look at maybe the weight of the food. Andrew, some people actually keep a metric scale in their, like, in their kitchen. At the number three level. Yes, they're they're even, weighing their food yes. at home. And by the way, when I say number three, I, I could be talking about like 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 okay, okay. on this scale as well. Um, you're probably eating a ton of eggs at this point. Uh, very specific nuts. Not all nuts are good for you, Andrew, but certain nuts are superfoods. And you start you to- You know your nuts. Yeah, you got to know the ranking of nuts. You know all the oils too in different nuts. Andrew, here's the thing. Brazil nuts, not good for you. Or, or it's like really high caloric content given oh, the, the big volume. ones? Man, yeah. they're actually really good too. Is no, it, no surprise. Is it, is it a shock that the most luxurious nuts are the ones right. that are probably- Probably no surprise macadamia nuts probably don't do much for you either. So here is the ranking of meats, Andrew. This is from a uh, PhD nutritionist channel. Obviously a hot dog of the meats got the F ranking. Obviously you got a uh, beef liver or cod liver. They were way up there. Somebody oh. says, uh, you also have to know your maintenance and how many calories that you're consuming in a day. Basically, you have to know your maintenance level what you, if you're at a surplus or if you're at a deficit. Are you tracking on your Apple Watch or Fitbit? Yeah. At three? Yeah, I think you so. probably have one and you probably are at least, at least you know your steps if you not know everything else. Um, You probably are thinking about intermittent fasting. You have a, uh, probably like a, what, six to 18 window where you eat within six and you do not eat for 18 hours a day, you're probably taking more than one supplement okay. in terms of not just a multivitamin. You're probably taking other supplements depending on what you need. All right. Um, you are probably, if you are not full keto or paleo, taking heavy influence from mm. keto and paleo. Andrew, uh, a lot of people I think would be better off doing modified versions of keto and paleo, but not like the actual full version. Oh, uh, okay. Some versions, at least like a half version. Yeah. Yeah. Like a half version. You know why? Because there is an emphasis on whole foods. You're eliminating a lot of grains and legumes, right? Mm -hmm. Except for like the top, top tier ones. You're eliminating a lot of added sugars. You're emphasizing healthy fats over, you know, saturated or trans fats. And then uh, both are effective for weight loss, even modified versions of keto and paleo. Right, right, right. Moving into level four out of five, Andrew. Ooh. This is probably the max of people in terms of like a regular friend group. There's probably not somebody beyond a four. Right. Like these are your super ripped friend. Like this is the friend whose fitness is part of their lifestyle. They'd probably put it in their Instagram profile. Yes, they might even have fitness 
in their Instagram username. Ah. And um, basically, a lot of these people, and I'd say most YouTubers that are fitness people with it, where they're amateur bodybuilders, they fit in this because you can start to essentially make money at this level. Okay. Like you can run a fitness brand, you can sell your supplements, you can you sell can your training content. program, you can do one-on-one -on -one training. Is this also like where they start to design their body, like shape their body? Like, okay, well I do certain shoulders because I want the shoulders to come out, I want the V shape, so I'm gonna do obliques and blah, 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 things right, like that. Right, You're not just doing a shoulder exercise, you're doing a left, right, middle shoulder exercise. Right. Um, I think Andrew, at this level, four out of five, they're starting to track all their food metrics beyond basic macros. So they're not just tracking, you know, sodium, saturated fats. They're tracking micronutrients too. Ah. Like a lot of micro stuff. I think they're weighing out their food on a scale all the time. I think they're starting to care about their micro gut biomes and their biotics. Essentially, this is where people, Andrew, they start to cut out artificial sweeteners because artificial sweeteners can impact your gut biome. Yeah. And oh, by the way, Andrew, this is also a level that we are not even close to. I'm not here, man. I'm not here. Let us know in the comments down below what level you are at so far. Um, they start to know the thermal rating of different foods. The thermal rating means uh, the thermogenesis. Basically, how much energy does your body expend even trying to process that food in your stomach? Oh, so there's the calories that how much Calor caloric energy it gives you, food gives you, and then there's also the measurement of how much your body has to burn to process, process that it. specific compound. Uh, right, because different foods process at different rates. There, yes. are, there are foods out there that take longer to process, which are good or bad? No, it's good. You good. want foods that take your body longer to process because it makes you, keeps you full for longer and you burn more calories just eating an egg, for example. Got it. Um, you are starting to track things that the people at the other levels lower, like one, two, three, do not track, Andrew. Insulin, glucose, cortisol, testosterone levels, and you are probably getting them professionally tracked. Mm. You're probably going to get a DEXA scan every once in a while and stuff like that. These things cost money. Yeah. Um, Andrew, you are probably strictly following to the dot, keto, paleo, intermittent fasting windows. Basically, Andrew, you are starting to know the ranking of not just meats, but of all the fruits, all the beans, all the vegetables, all the seafood, all the grains, beverages, oil, dairy, milks. Andrew, you know how a lot of the time in the old school food pyramid, they're just like, yeah, get your dairy in. But even within dairy, there is a strict hierarchy of what is good dairy, mid dairy, and bad dairy. Right. Cheese is not the same as like skim, skim milk. Yeah. And I think that that's the biggest thing, Andrew, when you... Uh, like even listen in high school fitness class, you might leave at best a one on the five scale. Oh, Like right. at the highest within high school nutrition, you're leaving a one out of five. Mm. And now we are breaking into the five out of five, Andrew. Less than 1% of people in America probably want to live at this level. Oh yeah, I think it's very hard. And it's very, can be like, I guess costly too. Yes, it could be costly. It could make you maybe not like, able to hang out with your friends. Yeah. I would probably assume anybody who watches a lot of food videos on YouTube probably is not a five, a positive five. No, no, no. no Honestly, because, if you watch a ton of food videos, isn't it more realistically that you're at like a zero? Yeah, or possibly one or two, one or yeah, one, or one, two, zero, yeah, to be um, honest. Andrew, these people are probably listening, not just listening, but following every single thing that Andrew Huberman says. Or this guy who's trying to like uh, get younger, this one tech founder. Oh, uh, man, I forgot his name. Jack Johnson or something yeah, whatever. like that. Whatever, he's Bradley trying Johnson. to like, yeah, turn back the You mean the, the, son who got a, the guy who got a blood transfusion with his son? In, yeah. I, I would say a lot of these people are starting to like piss people off because right. they say that everything's bad for you. Right. These people, they don't drink tap water. They think, of course, all artificial sweeteners, including monk fruit, are bad for you because it messes with your biome, it messes with this and that. It's almost like, what do you even eat at yeah. this point? I would say that these guys would even say, that you know how there's like different levels? Like people are like, okay, Kroger's okay. Oh no, I have to go to Trader Joe's. Oh, I can't go to Trader Joe's. I have to go to Whole Foods. These guys are at like Erewhon. Right. Like, Erewhon or, or nothing. Or they got those private brands or like the small brands that are like delivered to your door from right? farm. Yeah, like their almonds just got grown yesterday. Um, Andrew, these guys, 
uh, maybe a little autistic when it comes to fitness and dieting in the sense of like just taking it to the 12 out of 10 level, Andrew. They're eating a ton of beef liver, even though it's gross. And they'll say it's gross because of the amazing macro and micronutrients that it's packed with. They'll eat a lot of rabbit, deer, venison, which are arguably some of the most healthy meats, even though there's some social stigma around eating I, elk, deer, and, and and rabbit. I mean, I would say at this point, a lot of people are questioning why. Why are you at a five out of five? What is it about it this make, that makes you happy? How do you afford it? And why do you put your body through eating liver when you don't have to? Right. You can eat cra- grass-fed beef. You can eat pasteurized eggs. They exist. They're not that hard to find. But these people are like, nah, let me take it a step yeah. further. If man. it's not, Andrew, they're not cooking with anything except real beef fat tallow. Like, they will not cook with anything except those things. And, uh, Andrew, I think at home, they own all these expensive self-monitoring systems, such a, as a glucose machine. So they don't even need to go in to the professional office to get all these things tracked. They're tracking their own macro metrics so much, Andrew, that they own the machines themselves. Right. Uh... I guess, David, the, the five out of five level is pretty crazy. I'm pretty sure nobody watching is at a five out of five uh, watching our videos. Even when I watch the five out of five content on YouTube, I'm just like, why would I want to live? Yeah, like it looks this? very unappealing. I guess what level are you currently at, do you think? I would say I'm at a 2.5. I'm at 2.5. I'm still not even the fitness guy at work. Like, you know, I'm between like a normie guy, which is like a normie fitness yeah, guy. Yeah, I wouldn't and- say you're not calculating and counting your macros and writing them down. No, you're not no, recording. No. Them. I tried to do it a few days. You, that's not for you. No. So I, I think you get, you can't be three. You yeah. can't be a level three just yet. We don't, you're not using the Fitbit. Okay. But obviously we monitor a lot of what we eat, what you eat, right? right, right you're right. you're very conscious about the brands and the ingredients. Now, um, cheat meals. You do cheat meals. Yeah. I mean, we just had Mexican food yesterday. With our, our friend, we were ordering crazy enchiladas, beer right. enchiladas and fajitas Are you fasting? And like that. What kind of supplements are you taking? I would say that I'm taking a multivitamin, and I am taking some uh, other f- supplements, protein, too. Protein, protein, yeah. 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 Uh, for me, I would say I'm at a, at a 2 or 2.25 at a different way. For me, the easiest thing, and this is my recommendation, just that works for me, is fast and just cut a meal out. Because that way you can eat a little bit more delicious stuff and not have to worry about it if you just eat less food too. Right. But I still try to eat well. I always try to order veggies when we're at the restaurant. You know, I like my ceviches. I like my salads always. Like I'll eat the beef and all the, I'll eat fried chicken once in a while, but that's not something that we just go out and eat anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I got to really want to try it. I think the key is here, once you look at the scale that we broke down from negative five to negative two to zero to one to two to three to four to five, I think that's really where the nuances came in. It's key to know where you're at and where you want to be. Yeah. That's the key. It's not that everybody, like we said, I don't even know if people want to be around those five out of five guys that are like, hey, don't drink that tap water. It's messing Dude. with your gut biome. And you're like, shut up. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's realistic that people jump one point. I think you can easily jump one point if you really have the right mindset. Yeah. Right? And then jumping two points, you probably have to change something about your environment, either if you live with roommates that are always snacking. But if your roommates are at like negative two, negative three. It's going to drag you down. Drag you down a few points, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously it's easier if we live together so that we get to eat similar things right and you know but uh yeah anyways i mean i guess you guys what we're really asking is like what level do you think you're at and what level do you want to be at and that's realistic you know and i think you got to set your 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 sort of like your guidelines for example andrew we got the air fryer we eat a lot of chicken thigh bone in with the skin on and i was doing some research on it and a lot of people were saying the amount that the chicken thigh with the bone in and the skin on is tastier than a chicken breast is ultimately worth it for some people who are willing to take the fat and the calories. Right, because chicken thigh, especially with the skin on, way more fat. Uh, Tastes way better. Chicken thigh has a little bit more fat than chicken breast, but it's also like, in my opinion, two to three times tastier. Yeah, I think another thing is that I learned from watching a ton of videos. Like I said, guys, I watched even the five out of five people. Meat, especially like organic meats, are not bad at all because that animal ate a lot of vegetables. Mm. If you if it's from the right farm and went through the right, you know, if system. it ate good food. Yeah, yeah, assuming, yeah, yeah. So like meat is actually the only thing that most people can eat. I'm not like promoting a carnivore diet, but you can live on a carnivore diet. Interesting. Because the foods that you're eating, they ate vegetables. 
Uh, animals ate vegetables, guys. Um, Andrew, do you agree or disagree with this? Most super healthy foods, Andrew, can taste good or very good, but it's probably true that the most great, amazing tasting foods are going to be bad for Dude, you. Dude, the most or, or delicious more. foods are not low calorie. Like I've had a lot of good low calorie foods or even very good, right? Very like good vegan with food. Some, just some sprinkles. Uh, actually, vegan food can be pretty delicious, but that's not necessarily low fat and not necessarily solely only good for you either. Right, not, not necessarily impossible or beyond is not necessarily great for you either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, man, the, the most delicious foods I've had felt guilty for sure. You know, dude, when you eat full fat, ice cream now you can tell the difference you can you, you can. just you just tell yourself though it's not worth it yeah. and for me i just i like to fast a little bit because uh, uh also to save money so i think that there's two ways you can look at it in my opinion is like if you if you are saving money and saving calories then that's two good reasons why you should do something versus only just taking fun out of your life because a lot of people, they don't like to diet because they find it to be grueling or they're stressed out at work, so they want to stress eat and feel better, which I understand, you know. It's like a, like a psychotherapy. Yeah, type thing. but then you have to have multiple reasons why. And if you fast, then you save money because you eat less food and you're eating better food by saving calories on healthier food. Yeah, that's true. And I think your cheat meals are going to taste even better because yeah. you're going to enjoy it more versus like if you're eating luxurious things for breakfast, lunch, your luxurious dinner is not going to mean as much. Exactly. Yeah. I think long story short, guys, based off my research, if you eat 10 times your daily weight in calories and make sure they're quality calories, you will lose weight. 12X your body weight if you want to maintain and 14X in calories, make sure they're quality calories if you want to gain weight. Mm. And you just got to eat whole foods, both meat and veggies. It is helpful if a caveman can recognize it. That, that's the whole concept of paleo. Like your ancestor from a hundred generations ago on earth could still be like, oh, I, I can make out what you're eating. I recognize it. Oh, that's meat. That's veggie. Yeah. Okay. And I think that portion control is huge because a lot of people, Andrew, they take the healthy fats thing too far and they might eat like six avocados in a day and like five spoonfuls of almond, almond butter Mm. Even though those things are good for you, they're still like a portion aspect. Right, So right. I, anyway, guys, I think overall, my best advice, Andrew, is to people to be between a two and a four on the scale. Like between negative five, zero, and positive five, how about one to three to two to four? I think that that yeah, is Yeah, I'd say one to three is realistic. I mean, for a lot of people. I but, think it's a lot easier to become at least a two. Um, obviously, there's uh, some people out there that are negative that... I think you can easily change one whole number tick with the right mindset change. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I realized? This is the last thing I'll say, Andrew. All, there's all these channels making all these videos, and I realized that it's sort of like basketball shoes. You know how there's hoopers who just do not care what they wear? They just want something good on their feet. So I say, yeah, just get the LeBrons. The LeBron 20, the LeBron 21, get a KD. KD 14, 15, right, right. 16. You're saying it generally works for people. It's going to work for you. You don't need to learn anything about midfoot carbon fiber shanks or any sort of like traction rating or any sort of compounds. Like just get those and you'll be okay. You're saying that sometimes, you know, it can be very daunting to think about the complexities of a customized diet around you. Oh, well, I need a trainer to break down my lifestyle and a scientist to test my blood. Right, and now but I'm tracking like, micro and macronutrients. But it's and like, hey, just like, don't eat this and this, eat more of this, and then maybe eat less food and stay active. And that ultimately is like a good start. Yeah, just get the hyper dunk, the team shoe. Mm -hmm. That's like generally for most people going to be the best option. However, Andrew, there are other people who are going to want to know the nuance ins and out of every diet, AKA every sneaker on the market and the pros and cons and find the perfect one for them. Yeah, well, don't let uh, that get in the way of picking one. You know, because you right. just, at the end of the day, you need to get started. The best diet is the one you do. That's what I heard. I heard a good quote that said, the best diet is the one you stick to. Yeah, that's the LeBron 20 or KD line, to be honest. I mean, there's some other good lines out there, but you ain't going to be wrong if you pick those shoes. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments down below where you fall negative five to positive five on this dietary scale. Just 
know yourself, you know, so that you know where to get started and maybe you're happy where you're at. That's fine too. Yeah. You just got to know. So let us know in the comment section below what number from negative five to zero to positive five you're at, where you want to be at and what changes you'd like to make. Also, let me know if I was wrong. I don't know. I'm new on this journey too. Until next time, we encourage debate. We out. Hop, hop, boys. Peace. Peace.